Grand Rising loved ones, welcome back to another episode of Healing Wisdom with me, your favorite spiritual advisor, Empress Oracle. So, where shall we begin? You know, I took me some notes because this one right here is kind of deep, guys. It's kind of deep, so get ready, okay? So, today, I want to talk to you about being a victim of sexuality, okay? Don't be a victim of sexuality. Don't. A lot of you guys don't really know what that means, but I see a lot of it going on nowadays. And I can tell you from personal experience, you know, it comes a point in time in everyone's life where it's like you have a choice with your sexuality. I, I feel like everybody has a pivotal moment or sexual experience where they have to decide what it is they like, how they want to be, how they want to move forward, how they want their sexual um, history to go, basically, basically their, history, their path. So I will say, first of all, starting with children, starting with children and being a victim of sexuality, you have a lot of uh, guys that are very effeminate you have, and it's harder for them to find females that want to be with them because a lot of times they think that they're gay and they might not even be gay. They might just be extra feminine or something because they were raised in a household full of females. They didn't have a father figure. You know, it happens like that sometimes. And a lot of times there are men like that who are forced into um, taking a more feminine role in society or they feel like they have no choice. So, cause females don't really like them as much or are not naturally predisposed towards having those type of feelings towards them. So they gravitate towards um, men or because they didn't have a father figure and stuff. So they have those daddy issues and then they're already feminine. So they gravitate towards men. Men show them affection from starting from young and they always crave that because they never had that. So they gravitate towards men. They end up with homosexuality. Then you have the ones who are born gay. I'm not saying people are not born gay. Some people are born gay to each his own but you know you know the difference you have the ones who have been victims of circumstances whether it was in childhood or adult life that forced them into that role of sexuality or made them choose to identify with a certain sexuality I have come across so many um homosexual females who me my curious ass I'm like so why are you gay you know, and when I really sit down with them and we have a talk about it and they tell me what happened or why they're gay, some of them definitely, you know, I can tell like, oh, you gay, gay, because you can see it. You can see it in them. You know, like they would not look right being feminine. They that that would not be them. This is them. This is them. This is natural. And then the other ones, you know, they're like, oh, I was molested as a child or I was raped and or I used to be a hoe and then now I just, you know, I'm with females because I want that love or that affection that a female gives me, you know? So there's a lot of people like that. And those are the people who I feel like are not really gay. Maybe you're just bisexual or maybe you just prefer the same sex because you feel it's safer for you. Boom. Boom. That's my thoughts anyway. But also, it also happens that people also tend to confuse attention, you know, whether it's good attention or bad attention. Some people feel like any attention is better than no attention. So people have a tendency to confuse that or affection, even if it's just um, platonic affection. You know, just being nice, inquiring how somebody's doing, saying hello, being friendly. A lot of people confuse things like that for sexual desire. And those are the people who you can tell either they were just were not raised in a healthy environment to know better or they were missing something or they're craving something. So they automatically assume that. Shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it is. But I'm going to tell you, don't be a victim of your sexuality. You always have to know your worth. Even if something traumatic happens to you, it is okay. Don't let that hold you captive. Don't let that hold you back. 
from living the healthy, normal life that you would want to live. Don't. Because I personally can tell you from personal experience, I'm going to share a little story with you guys. It's a little deep. <sighs> so, me personally, I remember the, the pivotal point in my life where I had a choice on whether or not I wanted to be a victim of sexuality or not. So, I was away. I had went away to school here in Georgia. You know, I was about 19. Left my baby, went to go experience the college life. My mother was gracious enough to give me the opportunity. And um, make a long story short, what ended up happening was I ended up getting uh, kidnapped. Had to fight for my life got brutally raped. You know, it was very traumatic. It was very traumatic to me. And um, it was a very pivotal point in my life. You know? Before that, I was a fun-loving young lady living life, enjoying life, had a healthy sexual appetite and whatnot. Just normal, you know? I already had a daughter and whatnot. But that right there, that really did something to me. I, I definitely immediately went home. Um, I was uh, hurt, traumatized inside and out. So, you know, I had to, I healed physically. And I thought I was okay, even though, you know, circumstances didn't really work out well. As far as legally with the law, they really didn't do anything. They did not give me the justice that I deserve. But, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to be all right. So my body healed and I thought I was okay. And I was like, all right, for the longest, I did not want to go anywhere. I just stayed home, didn't want to go outside. And if I did go outside, once that sun started going down, your girl was inside, I was gone. We had to cut it. I didn't want to hang out with any males, anybody. Kept to myself. And before that, you know, I was a tomboy and all my friends were guys. So that wasn't normal for me to come home. And I really want to kick it with anybody. So I noticed I wasn't being normal. And I said, okay, I'm going to try back being normal. Let me put myself in a familiar surrounding around people that I know and whatnot. Maybe that'll be okay. So I started hanging around with a guy who I had known from high school. And we were very cool. We were very great friends. We were attracted to each other and stuff. But you know just never got together so the way circumstances got we started talking he had no idea what had happened to me no idea and he always would ask to come and see me and I'm like mm, no no uh, uh uh so finally I was like all right cool so he came to see me and we were just sitting outside in the front of my house in his truck smoking just chilling and it was just a vibe it was perfect I felt fine I felt safe because I was in front of my home you know, it had just started getting dark, but I was like, you got this girl, you're a big girl. <sighs> you could do this, you know? I was doing real good. And I guess he was feeling the vibe too. And he leaned over and tried to kiss me. And I cold cocked him right in his nose. Cold cocked him. Boom. Right in his nose. And he was shocked. He didn't know what to do. You know, he was like, what the fuck? You know, he didn't know what to do. And I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my God. I couldn't believe I did that. But it's like, I had just got so scared. It's like he turned and he like started reaching towards me, which would, you know, when I thought about it, would have been normal to proceed what was going on, the vibe and everything. But he started reaching towards me and I felt threatened. And um, I punched him. And then I was just like, oh my gosh. And I sat back and I was just like, I'm so sorry. And at that moment, I thought about it. And I was like, I don't think I'm ready. And I told him, I was like, hey, I got to go. So I left the situation. Um, he handled it pretty well. You know, I kind of explained something to him. I kind of made up some bullshit and told him whatever. But I went home and I thought about it. And I was like, okay, I don't want to be like that. I want to be normal. I was like, but damn. I was like, shit, maybe I just shouldn't fuck with guys. I was like, maybe I should be gay. 
I was like, that'd be safer. I was like, because then if a girl tried to attack me, I could beat a bitch up. You know what I'm saying? But then I was like, nah, I can't be eating pussy all the time. That's, I, I'm, that's not me. It's not me. Ladies, y'all cute and everything, but I don't. No, thank you. So I was like, okay, no, I don't want to do that. And I was like, well, maybe I'll just stop having sex for a while. And that was cool, but I had already stopped for months trying to heal. And I was like, one day, I, I don't I don't want to stop having sex. I want to have a normal life one day. I want to be happy. I want to have a healthy relationship with a man, have a healthy, normal sex life, do wild, freaky shit. You know? That Sorry, you heard of my boy, that's confirmation for the freaky shit, okay? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I was like, okay, this is not going to work. And at that point in time, this is why I say religion is my foundation. It's very important to me because God brought me through all these things that I'm telling y'all about. Okay, my faith in God. Because at this time, I had to really start praying. I had to really get on my knees. I had to pray and ask God to heal me, to help me to heal myself. I had to ask him to help me to heal myself because, you know, I tried to go to therapy again. And the when this situation happened, and the therapist ended up telling me her problems. She ended up telling me all her damn problems. So she came out of the session fine. <laughs> you know? But, um... I had to heal myself and I had to think and I had to say, you know, it's okay for you, for you to keep to yourself, give yourself time to heal and really figure out what you want to do. What are you really interested in? What do you like? You know, and you have to remember that that one situation was not your fault. That was not your fault. It was nothing that you could have done. You didn't do anything wrong. It was his fault. And sometimes people just don't know how to control themselves. And that doesn't mean that you should not give other people a chance. I had to remind myself, it's okay to be around people that you know. It's okay to be healthy and normal. You know, you don't have to feel pressured or anything to do anything that you don't want to do because of a situation, you know? And I had to remind myself of that too because with the same guy after that, after I felt like I was good, I got with him and we started dating and stuff and the time came for us to have sex and like I would do it but I couldn't do it do it it's like I would have flashbacks and stuff I wasn't fully there and he thought it was him it was like ruining the relationship he thought it was him it wasn't him I told him I was like I gotta get my shit together you know so I had to really really heal and I know a lot of females talking to a lot of females who I know are lesbians They've been through situations like that. And the reason why they chose to be lesbians is because they hadn't, you know, they still had that fear, you know? It is crazy. It happens. It does. It happens. It's easier to just, you know, be with somebody the same sex because you feel safer. Or it's easier to just be a hoe for some females. Because, listen, I had that, that choice at that point in the rape where I was like, okay, I could either be a fucking hoe because then I don't have to worry about if a nigga want to have sex with me when he come around me I'll just give it to him so he don't have to take it you know and I feel like that's how a lot of females end up being hoes because they don't want somebody to try to take it so they just give it to them because I have also spoken to some hoes and they said the same thing and I know when I came to my that point I thought about all these things and none of them were for me so you really have to heal and don't let a situation or a childhood or how you grew up identify your sexuality do what you genuinely like and what you're attracted to if you genuinely like the same sex it's okay you know if you genuinely want to be a hoe because you like different dicks it's okay just be safe you know just be safe to each his own if you genuinely just don't like sex like that it's okay it is okay you know and I mean it's just you have those decisions after a rape to be a hoe and have no boundaries so that way nobody forces you or to be a nun because you put up so many boundaries you don't want anybody to touch you and you you know what i'm saying you cut yourself off from that human interaction or to be a homosexual because you've confused the boundaries and you feel safer with the same sex don't be a victim of sexuality guys all righty it is okay you have to heal if something traumatic happens to you take that time out to fully heal and decide what you really want and it's okay whatever you decide 
I love you guys. See, I remember today because I'm not that high. Bye.